Final Cut Pro 11 introduces some super powerful tools for content creators. So this video is going to be a deep dive on all of the new reframe effects and modular transitions that were just introduced. The first effect I want to show is the brand new callout effect. To get access to it, you'll just need to go down to your effects, then you'll locate the reframe category and you can find call out. It's applied just like any other effect. We'll just go ahead and click and drag this directly onto the shot that we want to apply the call out. You'll notice my playhead is in just a little bit, so we're gonna start to see a change. But if we move the playhead back, the animation will go back to its base position. What I recommend when using the callout effect is to move your playhead a few seconds forward. That way you can get a good idea of what it is doing. The first thing you should notice on the screen are these on-screen controls. These are incredibly handy for using the callout effect. This first on-screen control allows us to adjust the position that we are zooming in on. We can go ahead and zoom in on the lower right hand corner of our screen. The box on screen control allows us to shrink or expand this box as much as you want to show a larger part of the image. And if you ever need to zoom in on your image, you can always use this circle on screen control to zoom in or zoom out. So let's say that we want to zoom in specifically on the call out effect. I'll just drag this on over and line that up and we can use these on screen controls and that's looking pretty good to me. Finally, if I want to adjust the position of the rectangle, you just need to click and drag directly on the rectangle to wherever you want in the screen. We'll go ahead and place this directly in the middle. Let's take our playhead back to the beginning and pushing play, we can see the animation plays out really nicely. Additionally, if I were to shorten this shot down, let's just shorten it down to five seconds, we can go ahead and push play again and see it animate back to its original position. If you don't wanna see that build in, build out animation, we can go ahead and disable it by coming up to the top right corner and you'll see in your call out effects, the build in animation. So let's just disable that and you'll immediately notice that there's no longer a build in animation, but if we push play, it will build out. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the build in animation enabled some other settings we can take a look at are this roundness slider. Now it's gonna be a little bit hard to see the roundness right now, so let's just introduce a nice outline. I'll drag that on up, and now you can see that if I take this roundness to zero, it's a perfect rectangle, but if we drag it all the way up, it gets much more oval-like. We can also adjust the width of that outline if we want to. Then underneath that, we can change the color of it. We can also add in an offset to that outline, and then underneath that, we can change the color of the backdrop. Right now, it's this dark gray tone, let's go ahead and push this over to a teal color. If you feel like you're getting way too much of that color, you can go ahead and jump into the background color mix and drag that slider down quite a bit. Additionally, if you don't like the background original color mix, you can drag that down and you'll notice how some of that background color is actually fading out. I want all of the color there though. Underneath that, we have the option of adjusting how much blur is happening in the background. So if I drag this to zero, you can see that it's perfectly sharp, but if we drag this all the way up, it completely blurs it out. There's also this inset scale option, and that's actually what's driving this circle here on the screen. So if I drag that up, you can see we're zooming in further, or we can go ahead and back it off. And finally, at the bottom, we have all of the controls to drive the on-screen controls just by numeric values. The next super exciting effect that was introduced with Final Cut Pro 11 is the picture-in-picture -picture effect. Again, you can find that inside of the reframe effects category and you'll see picture in picture. This one is very similar to the call out effect in terms of the on-screen controls it introduces, but it does have some important distinctions. I'll go ahead and apply the picture in picture effect. You'll immediately notice that it has actually shrunk my video down. If we push play, we can see how it animates into position. The main key difference with picture in picture versus the call out effect is that the call out effect leaves the background in place and actually blurs it out whereas the picture and picture effect is just shrinking the entire image to fit within whatever shape we define. In the picture and picture effect, you'll see a few controls. Again, we have the rectangle so we can adjust the shape and size of our box, but we also have this handy on-screen control to adjust the actual position of our image. We can also adjust the scale of it by clicking on the outer ring and scaling that up. And what's really incredible is that all of these animate perfectly into place over the duration of the animation. So if I push play, we can see how it zooms in on me and cuts off the edges. And if you want to adjust the end position of the picture and picture effect, you again 
just simply click directly on this rectangle box and we could even shrink that down a bit more somewhere in there. That's looking pretty good. The picture in picture effect comes with a whole bunch of other controls, which I'll showcase up here in the top right. So of course we can enable or disable the build in and build out animations, just like we could with the call out effect. But we also have the option of choosing from different animation controls. For example, by default, it goes from full screen, which is actually kind of my favorite of the animations. But if you want, you could change the from animation to go something like center scale, and we could change the build out animation to something Thing like right edge. And let's go ahead and push play and see how it scales in from the center. And then at the end animation, it goes off to the right edge. I strongly recommend you try out all of these different animation styles as it can bring so much character to your own videos. Underneath that is the move style. The move style is only visible by some of the animation choices. So if you have this set to say from full screen, you're not going to see any changes from your move style. But if we change it to something like bottom and then change the move style over to something like subtle fade and we push play, you can see how it slowly fades in as it's popping into place. Additionally, we could change this over to slide slide, it'll slide into place. We can also change it over to wipe and then combo just combines slide and wipe together to get the final result. Just like the call out effect, we could also change the roundness of our picture in picture. And if you want more of a circle, you'll need to drag that roundness up quite a bit and then shrink this box so that it looks like a perfect circle. Additionally, we can introduce the outline again. We can change the outline width. We could change the color of that outline and we can offset it just like the call out effect. You'll also notice this background fill color mix. This is again, very similar to the call out effects options, but it's more for the picture and picture effect. So if I drag this up, let's just take it all the way to 100. However, you might run into an issue with this specific slider because it is not going to animate into place like you might suspect. So just keep that in mind if you are using the background color fill mix. Another super important control to be aware of is this on-screen auto fit. So right now it is fitting vertically, which means that our image is going to fit depending on how tall or small I make this rectangle. I could change it over to horizontal and you'll notice that it's squeezing it in now as I move left and right with our rectangle, but it doesn't change as I move vertically. And then there's also the option for stretch, which is just going to stretch out the entire image to fit whatever shape of box we create. If you don't want any scaling to be applied based off the rectangle on-screen controls that are here, you can go ahead and set this to none and then you can apply all of your scaling based off this inset scale slider or again by using the circle that we had as an on-screen control. I typically leave it on either vertical or horizontal, but of course it's totally up to you. The last super cool feature that I wanna cover in this video is the new modular transitions. These are exceptionally handy for a number of reasons, one of my absolute favorites being a split screen effect. To apply them, you're gonna locate them over inside of your transitions, and they'll be located in the modular transitions category. To showcase these modular transitions, I'll go ahead and select the side-by-side -side split. To apply it, it's just like any other transition. If we push play, we can see how it slides through this quick animation, giving us a quick split screen effect, kind of a nice wipe look to it. But there's so much more we can do with these modular transitions. For example, let's say I wanted this split screen to hold for much longer. Well, to do that, I can go ahead and just extend out the duration of the split screen and we'll see it first take place. And then that split screen is going to hold in place until the very last second of the transition. And that does bring me to an important note. You do need your transition to be at least two seconds to receive animations for both the moving in and the moving out. But what's super cool about these transitions is we can disable the build in animation or the build out animation. So if we push play, we can see that it just immediately cuts to a split screen transition just like so. We can also swap which side the videos are on. So I'll go ahead and check this box and now the videos are flipped and they will also animate just like before. We can also change the move style. Right now it's combo. We could set it to just a simple wipe or we could set it to a slide. I personally like the combo look the most, but in the end, it's totally up to you. Another super cool thing about these modular transitions is we have the option of adjusting the split. And unlike almost all other transitions I've ever worked with, there's actually on-screen controls to change these. To get access to them, you'll need to select your transition. You should start to notice there's on-screen controls for the left, which we can scale up or move into position. 
we can also do the exact same thing with the right and these will animate into position just as they should. But there's also a hidden on-screen control down here at the very bottom and I can slide this to the left or to the right. So this allows me to adjust just how much split there is in the image. We can also adjust the line thickness. We can change the color of that line and we also have all of the options to change numeric values for the different controls that we were using with the on-screen controls. So that's just one of the modular transitions and they're pretty much all the same. The main key difference being the shapes that they are creating. For example, we could change this over to the star shape and I'll apply that. We could select it and see all of the same controls up here in the top right. We do have a few extra controls, like we can soften the star image if we want to, or we can add in a shadow, which is really handy. But for the most part, these modular transitions are pretty much the same across the board. They're very powerful, and I'm very excited to see how content creators use these to level up their videos. Now, while I was working with these modular transitions and reframe effects, it got me thinking how I could level these up even further in Final Cut Pro 11 using Apple Motion. So if you're interested in seeing a video about making these work even better for your own videos, you might want to consider subscribing as I'll have a video coming out about that very, very soon. If this video was helpful to you, then you might also want to check out this video where I do a deep dive on the new magnetic mask tool introduced in Final Cut Pro 11. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.